You've heard from the capitals. Now let's head to the war office. What is the numbers game on the ground here? If Putin wants to invade, how would his generals do it? Well, like any good general, it's time to pull up a map. We keep saying Ukraine is surrounded. This map tells you how it's surrounded. On the north, you have Belarus. Around 30,000 Russian troops are stationed there. They've got S-400 missiles, nuclear bombers and fighter jets. To the south, you have the Black Sea. Six Russian warships have dropped anchor here. They will soon begin military drills of their own. Their home base is this legendary port, the port of Sevastopol. No stranger to wars. During the Second World War, this port withstood bombing by the Germans. It's getting battle ready again. Finally, to the east, you have the separatist zone. Around 15,000 pro-Russian insurgents are camping here. Beyond them is the Russian border. And this is where the big numbers are deployed. Around 100,000 Russian soldiers ready and waiting for orders. They've got armored vehicles, they've got tanks, artillery guns, even field hospitals and blood supplies. Now you've seen the map, but what about strategies? How would a war play out? Most experts are talking about four possible scenarios. Number one is an all-out invasion, in which case all three flanks would see action. Troops would move in from Belarus, warships would engage from the south, but the serious fighting will most likely happen in eastern Ukraine. And this scenario would be a bloodbath, we can tell you. Scenario number two, annexation of Donbass. This strategy may ex excite Putin for two reasons. Number one, it's a face saver for him. And number two, the cost is going to be relatively less. There is popular support for a Russian annexation of Donbass. Think of it as Crimea 2.0. There will be sanctions, yes, and no official recognition. Having said that, a lot depends on Volodymyr Zelensky. He is determined to defend every inch of Ukraine, in which case regions don't really matter. Kiev or Donbass, Zelensky will have to fight the Russians. Scenario number three, a tactical victory. Attack, destroy and leave. This is another face-saving option for Vladimir Putin. He doesn't have to take Kiev. He can just inflict some damage and then retreat. Putin did that to Georgia in 2008, remember. He could try it again. But two things will make him rethink. Number one, Ukraine's army is more lethal than Georgia's. And number two, the attack in 2008 did not temper Georgia's pro-Western tilt. So if Putin attacks this time, he could push Ukraine further towards NATO. Scenario number four, unconventional attack. This could mean cyber warfare, something that Russia has invested millions on already. Russian hackers could shut off the internet or target security establishments in Ukraine, there would be sanctions, but no losses really. Another option is to step up insurgency in eastern Ukraine, deploy more foreign fighters, train more insurgents, give them more weapons. Again, in this scenario, Putin can cut his losses. Of course, there is a fifth option. Diplomacy shines through. The West and Russia read some sort of a deal, and Russian troops withdraw from the border. Well, this may look like the perfect scenario, but it's extremely challenging. For instance, seven months from now, we could be back to square one. More build-ups, more shuttle diplomacy. The problem is this conflict is all about egos. NATO will not let, let Russia dictate the terms, and Russia will not let NATO dictate either. And even if they reach a compromise, it will cost something valuable. The sovereignty of Ukraine. Vion is now available in your country. Download the app now and get all the news on the move.